We are underway. I am Spellman Evans Downer. I'm going to share paintings and drawings with club members this evening. I'm going to explain how I've worked from the ground to airplanes and then satellites and maps. Typically, working on the ground is a, a painting like this, and it's the east side of the Sierras. In 1985, I moved to Alaska. This is Denali Peaks, 1985, lithograph. Soon upon arriving in Alaska, I realized I wanted to get up in the air. So I had friends with small planes, and I was able to get up and see around Alaska. This is flying over the Susitna River, and here we are flying over downtown Anchorage. But I realized that the map view was the best way to analyze what I was interested in in the landscape. I was very interested in faults, geology, geography, morphology, and those things were best depicted using a completely aerial map-like view. I love rivers. I live in Cooper Landing during the summer. I was a Kenai River fishing guide for 10 years. Here I am rowing the Taslina. I did a lot of exploring all through the Copper River Basin, but I did most of my guiding for the 10 year period, 1991 to 2000 on the Kenai. My early map works are a study for downtown Anchorage Mural, 1989. And then we're gonna see the mural completed North Pacific Arc. It's actually in need of repainting, and I'm going to be making a campaign to have that happen in the next summer or two. I decided to go back east where I had connections, and I worked out of DC for four years. This is a painting of the DC capital called DC Diamond. And here I am up in Flushing, Queens, uh, with a work in progress that shows my projection. I was trained as a photorealist, and I use photographs to project images. That's why I get a likeness and a uh, correctness, but I paint very expressionistically. Um, here is an installation of my show at the Visual Arts Center of Alaska, and then we're going to see East Coast, at North Coast, West Coast. I, I tend to keep traveling around. I'm back in Anchorage here in 1993 for this exhibition. You can see a New York painting on the left, a Kenai painting in the middle. This is the Hudson River Museum from 1995, a very important show for me. And this really shows how I set myself up with a satellite image, a map, an aerial photograph and I combine them together to make these composite aerial landscapes. This is New York City at the time of the American Revolution. Always been very interested in history. And here we have the big show that I had at the Museum of the City of New York in 1998. I continued to paint New York City. I continued to paint the East Coast, Washington, D.C. and all the places that I've lived and worked in. But now let's turn our attention to some Alaska works. I've been 36 years in Alaska. I have been painting the state literally for that long, so it's hard to pick what you might show. These are some early works. We're going to see some of my fishing works, pouring paint that's a big part of my process, using currents and fishing holes as the theme for artworks. This painting is from this summer. Uh, I had a chance to go up to Denali. I hadn't been for years. This is uh, along the British Columbia coast. This represents the big fires that we had all last summer and the day Jim's Landing, which is the big takeout, got burned. This is searching for Alfred Russell Wallace. I read the book Song of the Dodo by David Quammen and really had a lot of interest in understanding uh, island biogeography. Uh, here we see Vietnam, and I'm about to go back to some California compositions, uh, revisiting the Bay Area in 2018, and the ongoing theme of uh, Los Angeles. This is done in 96, based on the faults and seismic activity, and here we have one from 
2018 greater Los Angeles. And here we have what I call burning up in the Coachella Valley, which brings me to my next sub-theme of global warming. And as Alaskans, we've seen all the temperature increases. It's, it's very, very noticeable. Of course, the low areas of coastal uh, parts of the world are threatened by the rising seawaters. And I'm doing it by pouring too much paint. I pour enamel as ocean. And if you pour a little bit too much, well, you know, it floods inland and creates bays. And I think it's an interesting way of depicting the future of the geography of these places. This is the past of the geography and geology of these three continents. And of course, 2020 wouldn't be complete without a depiction of Wuhan. Here we see some topography studies. I'm very interested in topography, I always have been. And I, I consider myself now a modern day topography artist. I'm painting Cezanne's Mountain, in this case, it's Mont Saint Victoire in Aix-en-Provence in the south of France. And this is uh, La Quinta in California. This is a section on music, and I was very inspired by Kandinsky years ago, who used music compositions as a way to make abstract art. This artist did the same. His name is Xu Te Shun. He's a Chinese French master of modern art. And he really got me thinking about Chinese brush painting and ink painting again. I went back. This is a painting they did in 82. It was the best class I ever took in grad school was the Chinese brush painting. So I've decided to kind of re-energize this approach. It's very thin paint. It's not topographic. It's very much set to the rhythm and the mood of the music that I'm listening to. Uh, we're going to see John Coltrane. I love listening to jazz. The improvisational aspect of the music lends itself very well to the improvisational aspect of the painting. It's freed me up from uh, not having to paint exact topographies on coastlines, so I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm curious to see what people think of these. The last segment here is a investigation of military battles, starting with Gettysburg. I had done Gettysburg 30 years ago with a big show in Fredericksburg, Virginia, but I'm very much interested in doing it again. I've also gone back and seen that, you know, I painted the Gulf War while it was happening in 1991. And this summer I had a chance to study Waterloo and did this uh, depiction of the Battle of Waterloo. And the last ones are going to be about the Normandy beaches during D-Day and the Allies hitting the beaches. This is Omaha Beachhead, a very difficult landing. Uh, Utah Beach, which was a little bit better in that the paratroopers were able to really undermine the Nazis from the rear. And that's depicted in gray. The black is Nazis, the red is the Allied invasion. And it's very, very expressionistic. So I'm harnessing history and expressionism. And I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what the reaction is to these battle depictions. I've really enjoyed reading the history. I'm working on Battle of the Bulge right now. I do want to remind people that I do have an excellent, uh, well-developed website, spellmanandexamander.net. I have many, many more paintings on view. I have statements. I'll have this video as well. My Ecotopia North exhibition will be coming back in 2021. It started in 2019. And this summer, I wanted to open it again, but COVID has prevented that. So come on down to Cooper Landing. I'll let all the club members know when the show is up. I, I probably will have an opening and closing, and I'd love to meet as many of you as possible in person and have a chance to get into more uh, stories and talk about exploration and landscape and the prediction of the world. And I'm thrilled to be in, in the club and to have had this opportunity to make a presentation. Thank you all very much. I hope to see you next summer.